on day one, I spawned in as a baby Fire Hydra during a worldwide war. There was an intense battle between Fire Hydras and the Water Forces. They found us! Water creatures went around and hurt my people with their powerful abilities, giving them the upper hand. No! Why is this happening? Suddenly, a large slam came from our home's volcano, and standing there was our large head Fire Hydra. Stand back! He shot out extremely powerful attacks directly towards them, giving us a fighting chance. You, these water warriors are very dangerous. We must leave at once and find the ancestral Hydra heads. The what? The skies then rumbled and large water wings flapped high above us, only to reveal the largest water phoenix that I had ever seen. You pathetic fire creature. My army shall get rid of all of you so that this land can be ours. The water phoenix and my head hydra started to fight each other. The hydra was very strong, but the phoenix seemed like he was even stronger. With one very powerful water blast, the head hydra was pushed aside. No! <sighs> My yell alerted the phoenix, making him turn his attention towards me. Get that small one, now! On day two, I was running away through the fiery swamps. A few water warriors chased behind me, and they were blasting at me. Ah! Stay away! The rumbling skies then shot out lightning, causing the rain to worsen around us. The increased downpour started to really hurt. Ah! Even rain hurts me? I kept running, with my heart getting lower and lower. Is this it? Just then, I got pulled aside into a cave entrance by a strange fire ability. What the? Who did that? I looked over, only to see a fire horse standing there. You, you saved me? Why? Because I can see that the water forces have found your kind too. Yeah, they killed all of my people. They're pure evil. All of my people are gone as well. You're lucky to be alive. From what it seems, all fire mobs are facing their extinction. Extinction? But why? What did we do to them? I then heard noises coming from outside. I checked, only to see the water warriors were starting to search. He could be anywhere. I can tell you more once we're somewhere safer, but right now, we have to go. On day three, I followed the fire horse until we found another exit out of the cave. As soon as I stepped foot outside, I heard whispers fill the air, almost as if I was being called to something. What is going on? I followed them, leading us to an opening, and in the center of it lied a hydra head? I walked over and touched it, causing it to activate. In a large flash, I absorbed the head, causing me to grow stronger. I now had three hydra heads, gained five additional hearts, and now had a fire ability that allowed me to blast out fire beams. Whoa, it seems as if each of these heads you find, the stronger you get. Yeah, no kidding. Just then, the nearby lake in front of us started to shake, and in a huge burst, a water beast was summoned. Oh, fire! I be gone! On day four, the water beast started to attack the two of us. With a wave of his hand, he would send out large blasts of water. Ah! But with my newly found power and my new friend's help, we were able to make quick work of him. You, you can be the key to ending this war. The water phoenix is said to be the strongest animal amongst the lands, and he won't stop until all of us are dead. Well, it's up to us to put an end to him and save our fellow fire animals. We can't let him win. Agreed. My name is Bran, and yours? You can call me Fozo. On day five, Bran and I used this area to build ourselves a safe hideout. I went out and got enough materials to make myself a set of stone tools, while Bran turned the nearby lake into lava so that no other water beasts could spawn. With my newly acquired resources, I was able to build both Bran and I our very own themed houses. This looks perfect. Agreed. 
As I finished, I saw a large fire beam shooting out in the distance. Whoa, what was that? Only one way to find out. On day six, I went over towards the blast until I was met with an outpost. There were cages that were filled with nothing but fire creatures. Please stop this. Shut it. You fire pests think you can just barge into our world? You will soon learn that was a mistake. All of the water mobs were getting ready to attack. Leave these people alone. The fire hydrant. Get him. The water warriors all started to fight back. They shot powerful attacks, but thanks to my new fire beam, they didn't stand a chance. After beaming down most of them, the last one started to retreat. Oh, this sucks. You will regret this. Great. From there, I broke all of the fire creatures out of their cages. Are you guys okay? Fire hydra? Yeah, seriously. I thought we were burnt toast. I'm just happy you guys are safe. Hey, I, I could have sworn I've seen your face before. If I remembered correctly, it was only a head. Wait a minute. You must be talking about a hydra head. Do you think you can show me where you saw it? Certainly. My name's Andy. Follow me. Sire, sire, one of the fire hydras has lived! What? Impossible! We made sure to dispose of that entire colony! <laughs> I know, but... Silence! He is a threat to this war and must be disposed of now! I will not let this prophecy become true! On day seven, the little magma rock brought me to the nearest desert. Follow my lead. He started to roll through the terrain, and it didn't take long until we were met by a clearing, revealing a very large coliseum. Whoa. The hydra head that I saw was in there, but it's a pretty dangerous place. Great. I made my way down, entering inside, and as I entered it, there it was. The second hydra head was sitting high up in the center, almost as if it were a trophy. <sighs> Coliseum's centerpiece? A Cerberus? Look, I need that Hydra head to fight against... Silence! I know of your losing battles with the Water Warriors, and I do not care. I have proven time and time again that I am the best multi-headed animal, and that Hydra head proves my point. <laughs> oh yeah? Well, if I prove you differently, can I take the head? <laughs> You have yourself a deal. On day eight, Cerberus led me to another part of his Colosseum, which revealed a very dangerous course. If you finish the trial, then you will be the winner. But if you lose, I shall add another head to my collection. Sounds scary enough. Okay, Fozo, just stay calm. Horn sounded off, and the three-headed dog hit me on the first platform. Ah, what the heck? Begin. I looked forward and started, partaking in jump after jump. I have to win for my people. I then reached a jump that was nearly impossible. What the? How am I supposed to cross this? I saw there was a stream of water pouring from the wall and thinking quickly, I shot my fire beam into it, turning it into cobblestone. Because of this, I was able to make the jump and finish the course successfully. I did it. Impossible. You cheated. What? No way. A deal is a deal. The deal is off! On days 9 to 10, Cerberus charged in towards me and began to attack. Ah! He shot out very powerful death abilities at me and did everything he could to take me down. You're a liar! I don't care! Cerberus was extremely strong and used power that was directly from the underworld. I thought I was done for. No, I have to get the head. I ran for it and Cerberus noticed this. No, stop. I picked it up, causing me to upgrade. I gained five more hearts and another Hydra head attached itself to my body. Watch out. Cerberus slammed down another attack at me. Ah, we have to get out of here now. 
Wow! I rushed out with Andy while Cerberus was chasing far behind. We finally made it to the entrance. I gotta think fast. Because I was upgraded, I can now shoot out powerful fire meteors. This will do. Using this new attack, I was able to completely cave in the Colosseum's entrance. Phew! <laughs> Take that! Not fair! On days 11 to 12, I left the Colosseum with Andy, and we were starting to make our way back to base. But suddenly, storm clouds started to form in the sky. Oh no, he can't be. I looked up and saw the water phoenix flying above us. There you are, foolish fire hydra. Do you think you stand a chance against me? You, you took my people away from me. Why are you doing this? Do you not know of your people's disgraceful history? You are all from the nether, a place your kind should have never left. I shall rid this land of your infestation. But we can all live here together. It doesn't have to be this way. Never! The water phoenix launched an attack down between me and Andy. But thankfully, we both jumped out of the way. His anger caused the storm to strike lightning down around me. Ah! The phoenix attacked me with a powerful blast of water, causing me to get really low on hearts. Hold on! As he shot another attack, Andy used a special type of magma rock power and turned himself into a protective barrier. I felt so weak and passed out. On days 13 to 14, I awoke back at our base with Andy and Bran staring at me. Uh, what happened? Hatchio was about to take us down, but I was able to drill us a tunnel out of there. Wait, what? Andy then used a sweet ability and began to dig right into the ground. Whoa. It's pretty nice for mining too. Here, have this. He threw me over a ton of iron. I think I know what to do with this. I crafted myself a set of iron tools and used them to build Andy his very own boulder home. As I was admiring my work, a figure suddenly appeared behind me. Ah! Who are you? So, it is true. The prophecy is in action. The what? The war between the water and fire mobs is a lot larger than you think think. You must follow me now. On days 15 to 16, I followed the fire panda into a massive bamboo forest where he led me to a hidden village of pandas. This place is beautiful. We walked into a bamboo hut and there at the end of it was a large painting. Is that? Yes, Hydra. The prophecy showing the world's largest battle between a fire hydra and the water phoenix. And how does it end? No one knows. But if the water warriors win, they may drown the entire world. What? I can't let that happen. Just then, I looked over and saw that the fire panda held the third hydra head. I shall give you this hydra head and aid you in your mission. But only if you help my people first. Anything to win this war. Go. Deep in this forest, find the sacred fire bamboo, and this head will be yours. On days 17 to 18, I searched throughout the bamboo forest. I followed a river of lava until I found a tall lava fall. At its peak was the sacred fire bamboo. Sweet. Now, how do I get up there? I looked around at my surroundings, and I saw that the cliffside had rocks that could be used to climb to the top, but they kept phasing in and out of existence? I walked around until I found a cave entrance near the lava river, and inside of it was a strange-looking contraption? This must control the rocks, but unfortunately it seemed to be missing its fuel source. Hey, would you keep it down over there? I'm trying to sleep here! What? I looked under the machine, and there was a small raccoon who was sitting close to a glowing orb. Ah, <laughs> This heat is amazing! Hey, you took that from this machine! I need it in order to- huh? You want this? Nah, -uh. Find his keepers, pal! Bye-bye! The raccoon then picked up the orb and sprinted out of the exit! Hey, get back here! On days 19 to 20, I ran after the raccoon, but he started to gain speed! 
fast. Come on. I just want that orb. No way, pal. He started to move through the bamboo forest even faster than before. They're gonna get away. Ah! In my anger, I shot out a beam of fire that almost burned the raccoon. What the? The raccoon stopped, finally allowing me to catch up. Look, I don't want to hurt you. I just... Wait, I think I know what will make us both happy. I walked back to the cave with the raccoon, gathering some bamboo as I went. With it, I used my fire ability to make the raccoon a small campfire. Wow! Thanks, mister. Okay, you can have this stupid orb thing here. He threw over the fire orb and I placed it within the machine, causing it to turn on. I walked out of the cave and looked up the lava pole to see that the disappearing platforms were all in place. I jumped platform after platform and finally reached the sacred fire bamboo. Perfect. I did it. Now, time to get the third hydra head. On days 21 to 23, I was making my way back to the Fire Panda Village when I heard, We are under attack! I ran in to see that all the pandas were being attacked by the water warriors. Oh no! They must have followed me here. I defended one of the pandas with my fire meteor attack, blasting back the water creature. No! Retreat! We got what we came for anyway! With that, the remaining water warriors ran away, and the pandas all looked very hurt. Oh, so they attacked out of nowhere. I'm sorry, but they took the Hydra head. No, it's all right. I'm just glad you and your people are okay. Look, it's not safe here. You guys need to come back with me to my hideout. I will lead my people there now, but you should hurry and follow the water warriors. If you find them, you find the Hydra head. On days 24 to 26, I followed the trail of the water warriors as they led me into a large sandy area. Where could they be going? I ran until I saw the water warriors flying over the water towards an island fortress. How am I supposed to get there? Just then, I heard the noise of hooves behind me. Bozo, the pandas told me what you are doing. It's extremely dangerous to be here. Bran, I know, but this is the only way I can get the Hydra head back. Very well. I think I know how we can get across the water. He took a step back and started to run straight towards the sea. Wait! But as soon as he hit the water, it turned into cobblestone, allowing him to forge a bridge that led straight to the fortress. Whoa! I ran over the stone bridge that he made, heading straight for the island. And when we finally made it, I noticed that there were doors that led inside. There! Hey! What are you doing here? Water warriors all around us started to take notice, and they began shooting water at us. Run! We ran as fast as we could, trying to dodge their attacks until we finally made it inside of the fortress and slammed the door shut. Okay, now to find that Hydra head before they alert the others. On days 27 to 29, Bran and I were sneaking our way up the water fortress stairs when I stumbled upon a room. I looked inside and noticed that it was a laboratory of sorts. They had multiple different tubes connecting to one pool in the center of the room. We have to hurry and finish this operation. But uh, Hachio said... Hachio said that he needs this done before anything else. What is there not to understand? Operation? What are they talking about? Knowing we had to find the Hydra head, the two of us kept going until we made it to the roof of the fortress. Not just a roof, but a phoenix nest. I'm guessing this is where the water phoenix lives. There, look! In a small pool at the center of the nest was the third hydra head. Yes! I walked over to grab it, and in another flash of light, the third head bonded to my body. I gained a fifth head, five more hearts, and because of this, I could now call down fire blasts from the sky. Oh, yeah! Now, let's get out of here. On days 30 to 32, we made it back safely to our base, making sure not to to be followed. From there, I use my tools to make huts for the pandas, just like their village. Now, place the fire bamboo so that my panda's fire spirits can be strengthened. I then placed their fire bamboo in the center, which sent out a fiery burst in the immediate area. This place is perfect. 
Thank you. Andy then walked up, looking concerned. Hey, you may want to take a look at this. I went over and saw that there was a fiery chest sitting in the center of our hideout. Where did this come from? No clue. All I know is that it's locked. Do you think it could lead to another Hydra head? There's only one way to find out. You know, I think I know of a way we can get this bad boy opened. The Hydra head. Why is it gone? Uh, sir, uh, the Hydra took it. Uh, but the operation is almost complete. <laughs> you can't do anything right. No matter. Once this operation is finished, it won't matter how many heads that fire Hydra has. On days 33 to 35, I went with Andy as he led me to a small, sad-looking forge? Are you sure this is the right place? Visitors at my blacksmith? You guys must be in the wrong place. Hey, my favorite Cyclops! Look, we need your help looking for a special key. I showed him the chest from our base as he looked over it with his one eye. Oh, you just need a fire key? Uh, follow me. We walked through the Cyclops' shop until he led us to a room with keys everywhere. Hey, hey, hey! What are you looking at, pal? Wait, talking keys? What the? Nope. No fire keys here. Just these regular old talking ones. Wait, talking? That, that's not normal. Oh, what? So we're not normal to you? Wow, get out of here, pal. Sorry. Good luck, guys. In order to get one, you'd have to go to the Forge of the Burning Star. Is there any way you can help us? I need to open this chest. Fine, but be warned. This forge is highly secured. On days 36 to 39, the Cyclops led me through a mesa biome until we started to climb a tall mountain. At its peak was a huge metallic forge that surrounded a large ball of fire. So, this is the place to forge the fire key? Yeah but we aren't the only ones trying to use it. Look. I looked up and saw that the entrance to the forge was swarming with goblins, and some even had helicopters. Okay, maybe they can be friendly, right? Whoa, where do you think you're going? Look, I just need to use this forge, okay? It's important. This forge is under the property of us goblins, and you are an intruder. Wait, but all of the goblins started to charge in and attack. They attacked in large groups, hitting me with wrenches. Ow, hey, knock it off. I unleashed my magma rock ability, burning down a group of them at a time. You'll pay for that. Chopper goblins then flew in, throwing down bombs that were pushing me back. I focused my energy beam attack and knocked one of the goblin choppers out of the air. Eject, eject. <laughs> All of the goblins were taken care of. All right, now to forge that fire key. On days 40 to 44, we made our way inside the forge of the burning star. So that is supposed to make my key? Yep, I really hope this works. Wait, what? The Cyclops pulled on a mechanical lever, causing energy to swell throughout the forge. Then in a burst of light, the floating orb of fire on Leash a beam of condensed heat onto the platform inside of the room. Is this supposed to happen? I don't know. The beam of light then began to fade and where there was nothing on the platform before now held the fire key. It worked. I picked up the key and used it to open the fire chest. But as soon as I did, I got pulled in a vision. Ugh, where am I? I looked forward only to see a large shadowy figure. You have done well, Fire Hydra. You have successfully opened my chest. Yeah, and you didn't make it that easy, by the way. My apologies. It's important that no water creature gets their hands on the secret coordinates. Coordinates? 
Follow them to us, and we will show you the way to the next ancestral Hydra hand. Okay, but why are you helping me? Before he could answer, I was pulled out of my vision and quickly noticed I had a book of coordinates in my inventory. Whoa. Okay, next stop, the next Hydra head. On days 45 to 47, I began to follow the coordinates, going straight into a large area of the tundra. Okay, it's freezing here. Wait, what was that? I ran and saw a large crater that held some sort of water operation site. And there in the middle was none other than the water phoenix himself. The infusion, it's all running according to plan. Yes, yes, finish it. One of the warriors flipped one last lever, causing all of the water to glow. I feel so strong what is going on the water phoenix grew in size with this power no fire creature will stand a chance against me especially not that fire hydra he then unleashed an attack so powerful that it wiped out a group of his water warriors at once what a monster i need to find those other hydra heads now on days 48 to 52, I snuck away, heading deep into the icy tundra until the coordinates finally led me to a snowy cave. Is this the place? I went inside and looked around, but there was nothing but snow and ice. Why would the figure lead me here? As I was about to leave, the ice below me began to crack. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Ah! Where am I? When I finally began to look at my new surroundings, I saw that the cavern was filled with a ton of fire hydras? What? But they all looked like they were freezing in the cold. My people, what happened to all of you and how did you survive? We survived by hiding, Fozo. Out of a tunnel in the cavern, the head fire hydra approached me. You, I thought you died. Clearly. We have a lot to catch up on. On days 53 to 56, we began to walk through the hideout as the head Hydra told me about our people. Fozo, when the Water Phoenix and his warriors attacked us, all hope was quickly fading for our people. Most of our species was taken down. Everyone you see here, well, they're the only survivors. Why? Why did you guys hide all of this time? We're scared, my boy. I knew if us fire hydras were to survive, we would have to hide somewhere those water mobs would never think to check. The tundra. You are our only hope. Which is why I asked you to come here for this. The head hydra turned to show me a massive wall of ice that rose as high as the cavern ceiling. Held at its center was the fourth ancestral hydra head. No way! I ran towards it in my excitement and shot at the glacier with a beam of fire. But as I did, Wait! in front of me, summoned a large guardian of pure ice. Oh no. On days 57 to 59, the ice guardian began to charge at me. He attacked me with his icy cold spear and I was doing my best to fight back against him. Why, why is this happening? The room, it's enchanted by the ice. Well, we have to take this guy down. Sadly though, the cold was starting to get to me and I started to feel slower and slower. Perish! No! Thankfully, the head hydra jumped into battle and started to fend off the guardian with me. We both shot out a powerful attack at once, fully melting it down. Because of this, the icy wall melted, allowing me to pick up the fourth hydra head. I picked it up, causing me to gain five more hearts. Because of this, I could now shoot out very powerful fire punches. Hey, thanks for helping me. Of course, Fozo. On days 60 to 63, I felt so much powerful in my new form. I don't know what would have happened if you didn't step in. Yes, 
While I know you are our hope against the Water Phoenix, I see now that you still need our help. Yeah, I do. The only way we're going to win this war is if we all work together. Us fire creatures have to in order to survive. You are right, Pozo. We will gladly follow you into battle. Yes. I then led the remaining fire hydras out of the icy cavern and into the open tundra as we started a march back to my base. Oh, well, would you look at this? Me and the hydras all looked up to see the water. Water Phoenix flying right above us. No. On days 64 to 68, my people were face to face with the large Water Phoenix. More of you Hydras. No matter. With my new form, I shall make quick work of you. Wait, please stop. It's not too late to change all of this. We can all coexist. It doesn't have to be this way. Fire creatures only bring pain and harm to those in the overworld. I am doing these people a favor. The only thing you are doing is lying to yourself. The water phoenix was filled with anger and began to fly in the sky around us. He then shot out a brand new ability into the sky, causing it to rain everywhere. It was hurting all of us hydras. Ah! With my newly found upgrades, I had to fight back. I won't let you hurt my people. Not again. I shot at the phoenix with any fire attack I could. My beam, my meteor, anything. I just had to stop him. I blasted him one last time, severely wounding him. It's over. Just give up. <laughs> this was all part of the plan. The water phoenix died? Wait. When? Just then, the immediate area began to shake, and out of a huge burst of water, his phoenix body was reborn. But this time, it was even stronger. What? It worked. I am truly immortal and cannot die upon death. <laughs> I couldn't believe my eyes. What am I supposed to do now? Bozo, we must leave now. I ran with my fellow fire hydras as the upgraded water phoenix blasted the world with his newly found powers. Yes, run away. Soon enough, this world will be flooded over. On days 69 to 71, I made it safely back to base with the remaining fire hydras. But I felt myself losing hope. The water phoenix, that was his operation? If he's truly immortal now, how am I ever going to stop him? Ozo, use this time to recollect yourself. I may know a way to defeat Hachio, but I just need some time. Yeah, you're right. I gave the head hydra time to think while I built up all of the other hydras their very own fire themed village i also made sure to build them a nice little lava lake to keep them warm there now you guys won't be cold anymore i then went around the whole base fortifying it with walls to make sure that if anyone found us we would be ready as i finished the head hydra approached me looking like his old self fozo i have a plan what is it? I know of the final Hydra Head, but it would be of no use unless you can obtain the power of the Eternal Flame. The power of Eternal Flame? It's a legend, but it's rumored that if you can obtain and master it, your fire will burn so hot that it could destroy anything, even immortals. Sounds like a plan. Where do I need to go? On days 72 to 74, I followed the head fire hydra's directions to reach a massive volcano. It took me a while, but when I finally made it to the top, I looked down to see its center was filled with lava. So, inside this volcano, will lead me straight to the eternal fire? Let's hope this legend is real. Ah! I fell through a layer of lava, but then I arrived at the center of the volcano. In front of me was a large portal. Yes! What is the meaning of this? Uh, 
Uh, I looked around and in the room was a group of lava guards. One ran up and stood between me and the portal. Hey, I need to go through there. You will do no such thing, Hydra. Guess like you are not welcome here. Please, I need that power to stop the water creatures. Our dragon overlord swore he would never see visitors. I have strict orders to let no one pass. But... But what? On day 75 to 77, the lava guard was showing me the small cave they had been guarding. We are bound to guard this portal, but are left here only to see boring gray walls. If only we could have a great view of the beautiful sky. I think I can help with that. I walked over to one of the walls and focused my energy on my new fire punch ability. Using it, I was able to carve through the cave wall. Come on, just a little bit more. And yeah, with all of those fire punches, I was able to blast a hole right in the side of the cave. So how do you like it? Oh, this is fantastic. You know what? You can go in the portal. You have earned it. I then went through the portal and found myself in a strange realm of lava and fire. Whoa, is this? How dare you? I looked up and saw that across the area was a powerful fire dragon. No guests are welcome. Explain yourself before I melt you right where you stand. On days 78 to 80, I approached the fire dragon in fear of his powerful form. So, are you supposed to be the one who holds the power of eternal flame? Correct, but those of the overworld are not welcome here. Please, I need it to defend against the water phoenix. I know of your troubles, boy. The water phoenix and his army are almost unstoppable. That's why my people and I stayed here, where it's safe. It may be. For now, after they take control of the overworld, what's stopping them from coming here? The fire dragon looked surprised by my words and walked away. I followed him to the top of his castle as he looked over his lava realm. You see, boy, I know the prophecy. If you are to be the one it depicts fighting the water phoenix, then maybe I shall help you. Yes! The power you seek is not given, but earned. To do that, you must face the Trial of the Blaze. A challenge? Well, I'm ready for anything. On days 81 to 85, the fire dragon led me back to the large arena in his castle, and standing tall inside of it was three tall pillars. This is your trial, Fozo. Light all three of the pillars with your fire. Sweet, that sounds easy enough. While I try to kill you. Wait, what? The dragon then took to the air and unleashed scorching attacks right at me. Ah, it burns. I tried to run around the arena and aimed my fire beam attack at the pillars, but the dragon kept attacking, cutting me off every time. No, no, no. He would blast his very powerful fire breath at me and his attacks started to burn chunks of my health away i surely thought i was done for i had never faced anyone as strong as him come on fozo you have to outsmart him i ran under the fire dragon as he was flying up to prepare another attack then this time instead of aiming at just one pillar i used three of my heads to attack all three at once this lit them all on fire at the same time Yes, I did it. The fire dragon then landed on the ground, looking surprised. You, you actually did it. I've never seen a creature as worthy of this power as you. On days 86 to 90, the fire dragon brought me to a hidden room within his castle. As we entered, he began to grow in size, towering over me. Uh, what are you doing? This is going to hurt. What? The dragon unleashed a breath of his fire down onto me. And as the flames completely enveloped me, I thought I was going to melt. Ah! But before I knew it, the flames were then absorbed and I felt my skin begin to crack. Because of this, my body was now surging with the power of eternal fire and I felt so much stronger. Awesome! With this power, Fozo, 
you will fulfill the prophecy and stand to face the Water Phoenix. On days 91 to 94, I left the Lava Realm and went back to my base. But as I approached, I noticed something wasn't right. Oh no. I ran up to the walls and looked out to see that a wave of water warriors were trying to attack us. Oh no, you don't. I started to fire down at my enemies with my whole team and we were so strong together. Take that. With the one final fire meteor, I took out the remaining water warriors. Nice job, everyone. Bozo, it seems you have obtained the power of the eternal fire. Yes, and now all I need is the final Hydra head. Correct. And I know just where to find it. Follow me. The head Hydra led me down into the center of my camp. I don't understand. You only need to understand this, Ozo. You are to carry the torch now for all the fire creatures. Lead them in a new age after you defeat the water fiends. Why are you saying this? Because I am to be your final Hydra head. Be their savior, Fozo. Make us proud. As he finished his sentence, the head Hydra started to lift into the air as his form changed into an ancestral Hydra head. Oh my goodness. I will make you proud. I absorbed it, causing me to grow even more powerful. I gained 10 more hearts, a seventh Hydra head, and now I was the strongest fire Hydra ever. Fozo, it is time. This is what the whole war has been leading to. You are right, Bran. It's time to take down the Water Warriors for good. On days 95 to 99, I made my way to the Water Phoenix's kingdom when I saw him talking to all of his warriors on a tall mountaintop. My people, with my new power, we are truly unstoppable. Go! It's time we flood this world and rid it of fire creatures. No, I have to stop him. I charge forwards, gaining the water warrior's attention. You, my people, take this fire hydra down. All of them then began to charge in. Stand back. I used all of my fire abilities at my disposal, slowly climbing the mountain and taking them all down. Yeah. No, no, no. You're all worthless. I'll do it myself. The water phoenix then took off into the air, flying around the mountaintop as the storm grew fiercer. It's time to end this. On day 100, I reached the top of the storming mountain, face to face with the phoenix. You stupid fire hydra. I will not let you stop my plans. He began to make the storm around us even more violent as he attacked me with his infused water attacks. Ah! He had the advantage in the air as I had to stay on the mountaintop. But I wasn't going to let him defeat me that easily. I would call down fire blasts from the sky as they pushed through the storm clouds, hitting him in the air. <laughs> He unleashed another attack that was close to throwing me off the mountain. I have too many fire creatures relying on me. You won't win. I have to. You people do not belong here. Yes, we do. My words angered him as he started to fly in straight towards me. Just as I planned, I focused my fire punch attack and unleashed a final blow that defeated the Phoenix. Yes! With the water phoenix gone, the world can now live in peace.